are. Hey, everybody. Hey, RPM. How you doing? Dr. Moore, Miss Bogan, how's the whole crew? This is Deirdre, Miss D, Auntie, and Mr. Jalen coming to you from the Atlanta, hot Atlanta. And I am wearing my RPM. Can y'all see me, my RPM shirt? Thank you, Miss Bogans. We are RPM strong. So we're coming to you guys because a lot's happened. And we promised that we would not leave you. We would not forsake you. We are not abandoning you. So we're going to be here as often as we can beam in on you guys, um, whether it be in Mr. Jones's class or whether it be through a video like what we're doing now, Jalen and the rest of our team, we're going to be here with you. And let me just say this, that we want to be here for you from a one-on-one -on -one coaching perspective as well. So if any of you desire to speak with us on this format on Zoom, that's the format that we're using, Zoom you can feel free to do so. And I'll work with Dr. Moore to make sure we're made available to you. So listen, let's get to the short and skinny of it. It's about that money, right? Because that's what we've been talking about. So uh, you know we're in a pandemic, right, Jalen, a pandemic? Yes, we are. And everybody knows that you're supposed to stay home. And let me just say a couple of things, right? So listen to what your public health department is telling you. This thing is no joke. Aunties had allergies. And um, for a moment there, I thought that maybe, you know, something was wrong. So you got to make sure that you stay away from people. You cannot expose yourself to lots of new people because you don't know who's infected and who's not. And you don't want to carry that back into your household and cause someone in your home um, to become ill with the COVID-19 virus. So we're here to talk about your money because I know we know that many of you are, are furloughed or you, you're not working right now. Some of you are and some of you are not. And there's more people that are not working right now than are working. And we want to be here to be a resource to help you understand how to navigate through this process. It is difficult. We acknowledge that. It's hard. But when something is hard, what you got to do, we talked about some words before, resilience. We talked about self-efficacy. What you've got to do when it's hard, you've got to continue to move forward. So all those texts that Dr. Moore sends you every day, read them. I tell you what, that gives you inspiration throughout the day. So what Jalen and I want to do today is we want to help you all come up with a pragmatic plan. Mr. Jalen, can you help us identify what that word means? And before Jalen gives you the definition, pragmatic. I want y'all to look this word up. You know, Auntie's always giving you a new word. Pragmatic is spelled P R A. G M A T I C. Jalen, talk to us. What does pragmatic mean? Definitely. So I think that um, it's important to understand a word on two different levels. It's important to understand it from a dictionary definition, just so that you have a uh, understanding of what it means when other people hear it. But you need to also understand what it means on your level as well. Um, and how it directly relates to your life. So pragmatic and the dictionary, dictionary definition is dealing with things sensibly and realistically in a way that is based on practical rather than theoretical considerations. So what does that exactly mean for um, us and what's going on right now? This means that we have to think about what's going on in our lives currently. Uh, we need to assess where we're at and then be able to make a strategy or um, a plan on what's actually going to be realistic that we can get done and take care of with our current situation. Thank you, Jalen. So that, that's what that means, pragmatic. So what we're gonna talk about today is how do you do that? How do you create a plan so that you can move forward? Because listen, there's, there's a saying, um, and, a, and a gentleman um, came up with this quote, he says, every storm runs out of rain. So this COVID-19, this, this virus, this storm, because it is a storm, it's going to run out of rain. When it runs out of rain, where will you be? We did vision boards earlier. We're gonna talk about that in a minute, but here's the process of actually creating a pragmatic plan. You've got to assess where you are. Where are you? And when we talk about where are you, let's talk about those various areas. Let's unpack that suitcase. So where are you emotionally? How are you feeling about all of this? How are people in your household feeling about all of this? How are you all feeling about all of this together? How are you feeling physically? Are you taking care of yourself physically? Um, if you were working out before, are you working out now? There's some things you can do at home. There's some things you can do without being connected to people and being within six feet distance of people. Keep in mind, people, when you go in public, please stay six feet apart. How are you doing academically? 
This is a new thing for everybody. Your teachers are learning. Your teachers have never worked from home, many of them. This is all brand new, distance learning. What does that mean? It doesn't mean you can get out of bed at 1230 and think you're gonna jump online and get your schoolwork done. You've gotta be committed. This is where discipline, that's another word we talked about. This is where discipline comes in. So where are you academically and are you committed to still graduating on time? And where are you financially? Remember all those coins we talked about? Where are you putting your coins? Where are they? You can't put them in the snack machine now. So where are you putting your coins when your coins are now limited? Because we understand many of you have bills that you pay, cell phone bills. Some of you all have car notes. Some of you all are paying insurance and some of you are helping pay bills at home. So we're gonna talk with you right now about how to navigate that. So again, I'm gonna repeat this, but what I want you to do, if you're sitting there looking at us, looking at Jalen and I and you're eating popcorn or you're eating, you don't have a pen or a piece of paper, we are gonna give you one minute to stop what you're doing, go get a piece of paper. No, you cannot borrow Mr. Jones's pencil because he's not here. So you have to get up and get it yourself. Go get a pencil and something to write on. These tips that we're about to give you, I promise you, they're gonna make this journey a lot easier. So we're gonna give you a minute to do that. And we are counting down now. I see some people getting up and getting their pencils. I see you. Go in the kitchen, there's one in that drawer over there. Matter of fact, if you've got a garage in your house, go out there in the garage in your daddy's workshop, go get a pencil. <laughs> Ask your grandmama, somebody, is somebody doing that, uh, um, is somebody doing the, the, the crossword puzzle? Go get that. <laughs> okay, I think that's enough time right now. You are in your own house. You didn't have to go outside on the street. Okay, so without further ado, we're gonna get busy on these tools. So Mr. Jalen, Talk to us a little bit about the emotional drain that this whole COVID-19 is having on people and why do we need to take assessment and how do we do that emotionally? Um, okay, so I think that let's just get down to, you know, what's real. Um, a lot of our, our whole situation has changed. Our environments are changing. Where we're at during the day, um, we're at home and they want us to be self-quarantined, social distancing. We're not around our friends like we were. We don't have um, the, the chance to be able to interact with people the same way that we were able to before. So, um, you know, anytime that your situation changes, that your day-to-day -day regular things change, we have to really look at what is that doing to us personally? What's, what's happening? Um, are we still are we relieving stress of this this new normal in a good way um you know i i think a lot of times that a good way to be able to compare is just journaling um being able to talk to somebody who you trust which usually um in a lot of ways are ourselves being able to write down what we're actually feeling um it allows us to be able to speak openly uh, without the the thought of somebody else listening in on on what we may be feeling and being able to really just release it, being able to openly speak on it and really really just get it off of our chest and be able to really take a moment to look back at it and see, hey, you know, wow, I, I may have not even known that I was feeling that, but I was able to get it down on a piece of paper and look at it. Um, another thing too that I'd like to touch on is are what are our new normal habits? What's going on when we're at home? Are we still being able to be in an emotionally uh, stable and productive mindset? Or, you know, I know that uh, in a lot of situations when there's new stress, new surrounding things, a lot, a lot uh, things along the lines of that, that we may even get to a point to where uh, you know, we're doing things more often than we were beforehand. Are we emotionally eating? Is this something that's, that's stressing us out and we're going uh, to things that maybe we weren't going to as often? Um, you know, more TV, more, more um, uh, you know, video games and things along the lines of that to try to uh, you know, get us emotionally stable while having that um, you know, to be able to express ourselves in the ways like that. I just think that we need to be really conscious of what's going on and, uh, you know, what we're doing now that things have changed. Mm -hmm. That's very important. Um, the, the emotional piece is critical because, you know, we understand too that, that many of you 
um, everybody's at home right now. Everybody's told to stay at home and that's critically important. You must stay at home so you can stay alive. So, you know, there may be people within the home um, that you have issue with. So now's the time to stop and take a deep breath. Remember your vision boards where you talked about where you wanna be in your various relationships. So take inventory of those. So Jalen, now let's talk a little bit about physically. I know you're a workout buff. Um, you know, I wanna get there at some point in time. So talk about this physical piece. Um, and before you jump into that, I'm gonna tell you that initially when all of this broke out, when COVID virus broke out, um, my sinuses were bothering me because allergy season had kicked in. And I was very concerned. I was highly congested, um, couldn't breathe. And at one point in time, I said, okay, wait a minute, what's going on? So I literally called my doctor, um, went to the doctor, and they told me that I was fine. So, so you've got to make sure that you're looking, listening, paying attention to your physical symptoms. If there are people in your homes that have got predispositions, you want to make sure you talk to their doctor so you can find out what you can do to make them comfortable. But again, physically, let's talk about that, Jalen. Okay, so I think that um, physically definitely has a lot to do. Uh, it, it kind of works together with the emotional and the mental piece. So physically, I like to really get my day started in the morning by working out. I usually like to hit the gym before I'm doing anything just to kind of get my mind right, get my mind stimulated, um, get in the zone, get the blood flowing and everything um, to be able to focus. And I like being usually in the gym. It's around people that are kind of doing the same thing as me. I know that I'm focused on what I'm doing, but I'm in a like-minded a like surrounding and environment. Well, unfortunately, all the gyms are shut down now. Um, so a lot of that has to be taken into the place of I have to do a lot of things at home. I think that it's extremely important to keep doing that and keep your maintaining your regular routine, not fall too far off of that, um, to keep your emotional stability. Um, I also think that now is a time to where we really have to look at what we're, what we're doing and intaking on a regular basis. Are we still eating healthy? Um, are we eating more than we were? And are we eating in a place to where we're just doing convenient snacks and things along the lines of that, because this is a time that definitely, um, when, you're, when you're stuck in the house and you're not able to get out on a regular basis and just even have your regular exercise and things along the lines of that, um, that your food intake, you definitely have to watch what you're putting into your body. And is that going to push you into a, a taking in unhealthy fuel which could lead to um, you know, emotional stagnation and even uh, depression in some places. So there you go. So the sugars, the salts, all that stuff that is um, the processed foods. Now's the time where you're at home. You all have learned some great things from the, um, uh, the ladies there that, that have come to visit with you all that have taught you how to cook, the Junior League. So you've learned some things. So if there's healthy food in the house, really commit yourself. This is again, a time of discipline. You can come out of this better than when you went into it. So you can come out with better eating habits. So we encourage you to eat healthy. We also encourage you to work out while you're at home. Now, we're here, we're brought to you by your academic, your academic supporters. So we're here because of the school system. So how are you taking care of yourself academically and how do you assess where you are academically? Let's talk a little bit about that, Jalen. Okay, so I, um, I think that a huge thing is you got to keep up the same schedule that you had beforehand. Uh, you got to be waking up the same time that you were getting ready and really getting into it. It's kind of like that summer vacation when you take that time and everything starts to switch up. Your the time when you're going to sleep switches, and then you're on, uh, you know, the night shift compared to the the day shift and things along the lines of that. Everything can get out of whack. So the more that you can keep um, in control of what you what you're used to and what your normal is, it's going to make for a better shock. It's going to make for less of a shock coming back into it as you're getting back into uh, you know, the school routine and things along the lines of that. And it's really just going to help you keep your regular normal. You got to think about, um, you know, are you just, just because you do have the leniency of doing these um, assignments online, that can be harder in a lot of ways because you're not actually in the academic environment. You're not in the classroom. You're not focused on 
you know, this is the time where I know that I need to be focused on doing whatever they're asking me to do. Uh, so you got to get disciplined. You got to, you know, think about where am I doing this, this work at? Am I doing it in front of the TV? Um, or am I doing it in a, in a room, you know, where I'm actually able to focus on that? Am I distancing myself from um, <laughs> siblings? And um, am I distancing myself from my siblings and uh, family members and things along the lines of that? So I can actually stay focused and, and get done what needs to get done. Because I know that uh, with this being so close for a lot of you all, especially in senior year, um, this is one of the biggest curveballs that could be thrown at you, especially at this time where it's crucial, you know, coming up on graduation, things along the lines of that. Um, so just really just trying to stay on track to make sure uh, that you're getting everything that you need to done. Stay closely connected to your teachers stay closely connected to your teachers. You all have a, a tribe of teachers who care about you um, incredibly. So please stay connected to your teachers and do your part because your teachers are doing everything they can. And, and I see teachers working hard. Miss Amy, Miss Suzanne, Dr. Moore, all your teachers, Mr. Jones, all of your teachers, they're working hard to ensure that you're getting what you need so that you can graduate on time. And we don't know what all of that's gonna look like moving forward, but you wanna make sure that when they say, graduation time is here, you've done everything you need to do to stay caught up. That leads us into this next portion, which is financially. I realize that many of you, uh, we realize that many of you are actually gaining access to distance learning by way of your cell phone. It is so critically important to pay your cell phone bill. If you got paid last week and that was your last pay period, part of what we had been talking about previously was your budget. Your budget, you needed to know how much you made, what was your net, what were you bringing home, what were your bills, and I got to see many of you had cell phone bills, many of you had car notes, many of you had insurance. So when is your cell phone bill due? That's something that you ought to know by now because it's March. So if you've not called your cell phone company because you cannot make your cell phone bill, we're gonna walk you through what it looks like for you to take care of yourself financially. If you're home, you're not able to work because they've told you that you're not working for three weeks or whenever they're, they're talking about letting us go back and nobody knows that right now. What are some things you can do to make sure you don't go further under financially? So Jalen, let's talk a little bit about that cell phone bill. What, what are some options that people have if they don't have all the money right now? Right, definitely. So a good thing that, um, that we've been hearing about are cell phone carriers, cell phone companies, they're willing to work with people going through this time. Um, the biggest part about this, though, is that we're going to have to be actually speaking with those cell phone carriers and allowing them to work with us, telling them what's going on, telling them if we have it, um, if we don't, and if we even have a partial part of it to not get too far behind, that's going to be a really big thing, too. Uh, we want to make sure that we're current with a lot of these things, and if we're not able to make those payments right now, that we do have a plan coming up for when those times uh, come because it will be due eventually. We wanna make sure that we're not further in the hole uh, just because we're able to possibly uh, defer or push a payment back um, and really make sure that we stay on top of those things and plan for them. Absolutely, thank you, Jalen. And, and some other things that Jalen and I talked about, many of you that are, are paying car insurance, you're paying car notes, the same principle applies whomever it is that you owe, because you took out a loan, you, you've been extended credit, it's critically important. That's why your budget is so very important. You need to know when your bills are due every month. You need to know how much you're paying every month. If you're not able to make that full payment, now you need to modify your budget. Now's the time to go back and modify your budget based on what you know you've got coming in. When you modify your budget and you contact your creditors, you let them know what you can pay. And right now, nobody expected this. This is an act of God. That's what everybody's calling this. So nobody expected this pandemic. So because nobody expected it, creditors are being lenient, but you have got to take the initiative to call. CSE is here for you. Auntie and her team are here for you. So those of you who need assistance and want help actually calling and asking um, for, for a payment reduction or asking for a payment plan, contact Dr. Moore and Dr. Moore can make sure that we are able to get in contact with you or you're able to get in contact with us. Um, some other things that Jalen and I had talked about, saving bills, saving money on your electricity. Everybody's home now, right? So 
All the lights don't need to be on. I can remember my grandfather telling me, close my refrigerator door, you're burning up my electricity. <laughs> so don't stand in front of the refrigerator just looking to see what's in there. Close the refrigerator door. If you're not in a room, turn the lights out. You're gonna help the adults that are paying those bills also. And, and the, same, the same principle applies with utility bills. If you know that you owe a utility bill right now, the utility companies are being very flexible. You've got to call them as well. Um, Jalen talked about this under the physical aspect. Don't find yourself eating everything because it's there. And I don't know what the pantries look like in your household, but some pantries are a little bit more limited than others. So eat when you're hungry and really assess where you are. So if you feel like you're emotionally eating, you can really address that. Because if there's more than one person in the household, everybody has to eat, right? Um, we talked about that gym membership. Great advice that Jalen had about your gym membership. If you've got a current gym membership, ask them to suspend it. You don't have to cancel it, but ask them to suspend it. Now, you know, we believe in keeping it 100 here at CSE and at RPM. We talked about in your budgets. Are there some habits that you have that you've got written in your budget? Because remember, if you're spending money on things that are habitual or bad habits, you still need to write it down in your budget so you know and you're aware of what you're doing. Now's the time to really take a look at those habits and decide whether you're going to let them go. Because now is the time for you to take a look at, is this money gonna go towards food because my dollars are limited? So am I gonna spend this money on my needs or my wants? Now's the time. And uh, if you got cable, you're paying a cable bill, do you really need that cable? Or do you have Hulu or Netflix? I tell you what, $5.99 a month, I'll take that over a $75 cable bill. And many of you have a lot of different family members on your cell phone bills. Now's the time to be able to sit down calmly, without emotion, with business and talk about what the family needs, who needs a phone, who doesn't. Because I realize if there's a household where there's three or four students in the household and all of you have distance learning to do and you've got one device, that can be difficult. So again, CSE is here for you all. If you need to talk to us so we can do a little one-on-one -on -one coaching or you just need an opportunity to vent, we're here to talk with you about that and how you can possibly approach that issue at home so that it doesn't become a problem. Now, Jalen and I wanted to revisit one last things we're about to wind down because we've got about uh, how many minutes we've got about seven minutes and 53 seconds with you guys because we promise to keep it short sweet and to the point so Jalen this group of amazing young people they created vision boards mm -hmm. and within their vision boards all the things that we just talked about the emotion their emotional countenance um, their education their physical countenance their financial all of those things were part of their vision boards so now's the time, because we talked about vision boards are due, they're meant to be revised. Jalen, do you want to talk a little bit about how you may be taking a different look at your vision board right now, but you're not thwarting your goals? There's another word, thwarted. You're not telling your goals, I'm putting you on hold, I'm going to squash you, I'm not going to make sure that you happen. But what are you saying in a, in a season and a time where a crisis has hit, there's a storm. You had goals that you set six months ago, three months ago. How do you revise your vision board right now? Definitely. So I think that now is actually the perfect time where you can sit down and really look at a vision board and you can start to think about more details of what that really looks like. You can really think about what, what are the steps? What's, what's going to happen if I want to take a trip um, to the beach, something along the lines of that, what, what does that whole trip really look like? I can, actually take the time to really work through that vision and see what the details are going to be. Am I going by myself? Do I have a friend that I want to take? Am I going with family? Um, you know, how much is each person going to have to put in things? I think that um, now is a great time where we can really, really, really start to dig into what those visions look like because the further in detail that you really understand, am I going to have to get a rental car? Am I going to have to be taking Uber? Um, you know, where am, am I going to be staying? How much food am I going to be needing? Am I going to want to eat nice? Um, am I just going to want to get by so I can spend more money on the beach or things along the lines of that? Um, you know, we, it's, it's really a great time where you can actually start to detail and to outline these things to make it happen. Um, and starting to see what's, what it's really going to take for it to happen. Um, and then, I mean, along the lines of that, you can also look at, okay, well, where am I right now? And how has this pandemic that we're currently going through pushed those things um, a little bit further away? Or maybe it's made it 
that you can do them sooner. You know, you just have to really look at it and assess uh, what's going on right now. So I think that just staying up to date with it, re revisiting it is going to be a huge thing. Just keeping something, keeping a goal, keeping um, the vision that you want alive. And I, I think that now is a great time for a lot of those assessments and really getting with, um, you know, one of the team members and looking through it and, and seeing how that can um, happen as soon as possible. Absolutely. So some things that you're definitely going to want to um, really wrap your arms around and get under control are your finances, your spending habits. Now's the time if you've not done that previously, because again, in our budgeting talks, we talked about naming every dollar, knowing where every dollar is going. And in the event that your dollars have now shrunk and you now have more month than you do money, it's critically important that you get that budget sheet from Mr. Jones. And hopefully you all have a way to print it out. If you don't have a way to print it out, a budget's a simple thing, a piece of paper, and you already know the process that we went through. So begin, again, rename your dollars if you need to. One of the other things that I want to put out there that we want to share with you all, there are individuals, there are companies hiring in every town. But here's, here's to some, some, some food for thought and, and some word of caution to you. Your grocery stores are hiring. A lot of your retail stores are hiring because they still need to get supplies out to the people. So where the grocery stores are, people will be. People still need to eat. The pharmacies and the, and the drug stores are still hiring. It is so critically important that you be well, help, you be healthy before you take those jobs, that you take care of yourself, that you ask the employer if you are in fact looking to get one of those part-time jobs or a temporary job during this time. Ask them what their safety precautions are. You need to make sure that you are taking care of yourself and your family because remember, whoever you expose yourself to during the day, you're exposing your entire family to them as well. So please be careful, but know that you are able to work in the event that your family says that you can work. So if you're still bringing in income and if you're not, even if you're not, it's critically important that you get back to budgeting. It's critically important that you all graduate on time. So don't let this, don't let this distraction hinder you from graduating. Do not let this distraction hinder you from doing everything you need to do to take good care of yourself. We've talked about self-care. Self-care is the best care. How do you choose to come out of COVID-19? Do you wanna come out better? What do you want to see happen with you, for you, when you come out of COVID-19? Now's the time to make your goals plain and clear Go back, look at your vision boards. You've got them digitally on your computer and identify what you can change. Be willing to do whatever you can do to make the situation better for you, for yourselves and for your future. Remember, you're not gonna be this age forever. So keep looking at ways that you can keep leveling up and that you can make your future everything you want it to be. So Jalen, I think we've come to about the end of our time. We've got a minute and 26 seconds left. What else do you wanna share with our amazing students before we leave them? I think that right now it's just, um, like you said, we really need to be focusing on coming out of it because eventually it will end. Uh, we need to be looking at what's going on. How, how much has this set us back? Um, are we going to need to be looking at paying things off in the future because we were able to defer them now? Uh, now is the perfect time where we can be proactive and really we have the time to be proactive um, in the space to be proactive, to really think about how can we get ahead of the curve instead of trying to work it out as it comes a little bit later. So just like you said, I think that it's going to be um, super important to just really start to think about these things, ponder these things. Anytime that you're not familiar with something, um, I think that it's just best to reach out and really utilize this time that you have to work with uh, the team and really make for the best 2020 experience after everything's taken care of and everything's done. Absolutely. And we want you all to know too, thank you, Jalen. It's been a pleasure to, to, to be on, on uh, Zoom with you yeah. and to yes. talk to our students. I got all excited. I got a young on my team. So my young is teaching me how to use Zoom and all of this technology. But we want you to know that you can follow us on Facebook. Um, you can follow us at CSE Develops on Facebook. We're also on Instagram at CSEATL, and you can also e email Auntie. So you can email me at Deirdre, D-E-I-R-D-R-A, at community, C-O-M-M-U-N-I-T-Y, 
S is in Sam, E is in Edward.org. That's Deirdre at communitysE.org. We thank you guys for listening and we hope and pray that you all are doing well. And we're going to be back with you again, probably this is Thursday. We'll be back with you in Monday. We're going to be coming to you with at least two videos and hopefully we'll be able to get in the classroom with you guys live so we can do a little distance learning with you too, because we got some more stuff we got to talk about. Remember, we haven't covered credit yet, right? Okay. Thanks guys. Bye. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye guys.